What does the Flight School Operations course teach you? In our Flight School Operations course, you will learn a variety of concepts that will help you save money and make good decisions about your flight training. The course will teach you what to avoid and what to look out for when choosing a flight school in order to minimize your costs and maximize your training's effectiveness. At Pocket CFI, we take the controls of your future and place them back in your hands. If you only remember one thing from the FSOC, let it be this. Just because a flight school's quote is cheaper than another doesn't mean you'll end up paying less. Let's discuss how flight schools make financial decisions. Flight schools have costs. When an airplane flies, it burns fuel and oil, and every month, the school pays insurance bills. In order to make money, flight schools need to charge you an hourly rate. In order to determine this rate, they need to know their own hourly costs and then mark them up. There are two types of costs, variable costs and fixed costs. Variable costs are costs that change with the hours the airplane flies. If it flies 10 hours a day, it will use 10 hours worth of fuel. If it only flies five hours in one day, it will use five hours worth of fuel. The cost increases as the hours increase and vice versa. If the airplane uses 10 gallons of fuel per hour and it flies for 10 hours, it will need 100 gallons of fuel. If each gallon costs $4, it will cost the school $400. If the airplane flies five hours, it will cost $200. Therefore, the airplane costs the school $40 an hour in fuel. Fixed costs are the type of costs that stay the same no matter how much the flight school operates its airplanes. Every airplane is insured. Every month, the insurance company wants to be paid their premium no matter how many hours the airplane has flown. The same would apply to an annual inspection and many other costs. For fixed costs, it's harder to estimate how much the airplane costs per hour because the school needs to estimate how many hours the airplane will fly each month. For example, if the insurance costs $600 a month and the school's aircraft flies 25 hours a month, it will cost the school $24 an hour for insurance. But if the school thinks the aircraft will fly 50 hours a month, it will cost the school only $12 an hour for insurance. So the more the airplane flies, the less it costs per hour. Flight schools have an incentive to fly their airplanes as much as possible, and they do this by increasing their student load. But they have to be careful, because if they increase it too much, students have to wait to fly, and while they wait, they still have to pay for food, rent, internet, and whatever other costs they have. So it's here where you can lose out dramatically. If the school has too many students, you will not fly consistently, which means you will need to review more often and you will need a longer time to complete your training, all of which will cost you more money and make the school more money. The key ratio of students to airplanes to instructors is 4 to 1 to 1. For 4 students, the school needs to have 1 airplane and 1 instructor. So for 8 students, the school needs to have 2 airplanes and 2 instructors. Additionally, they should now have 1 airplane and 1 instructor as a backup in order to compensate for unforeseen issues. The key is a consistent student load throughout the year. This way, every student can fly every day and experience the best possible training environment. We strongly recommend that you read the entire FSOC in order to learn the concepts and apply them to your future the best way possible. The FSOC was written for you so that you can save yourself a lot of trouble in the future. It's worth your time. Schools keep their quotes low, but you will pay more. Remember. Just because a flight school's quote is cheaper than another doesn't mean you'll end up paying less. Schools have to keep their quotes as low as possible because of their competition. Other schools have low quotes, so they need to have a low quote as well. But what you're never told is that these quotes are unrealistic and that you will end up spending more money than you were quoted. Schools can do this because there is a legal minimum training requirement put in place by the FAA. These are commonly referred to as the FAA minimums. Schools can take these minimums and create inexpensive quotes, which cover their legal obligation. 
but which are not realistic. It's virtually impossible to finish your training in FAA minimums. The few who do had everything go perfect for them. Flight schools know this and take advantage of your lack of industry knowledge to lure you to their school. Furthermore, quotes don't include all the costs you will actually incur. It's important to make sure you understand that you might have to pay extra for your CVIS, TSA, medical certificate, food, insurance, transportation, FAA exams, and housing. There are lots of small hidden costs to watch out for, and you should have a contract that explains them and protects you. Contact one of our professionals to analyze flight school promotional materials and quotes with you. We can help you see through the marketing tricks. It's very important for you to know that agents cannot do for you what Pocket CFI does because they're paid by the flight school. Agents receive money from the flight school when you begin your training or when you make a deposit. Their loyalty lies with the flight school because it's their job to recruit students for them. Agents are part of your problem because they know the truth about the quotes and how the school operates, but they will not tell you until it's too late, if at all. Pocket CFI, on the other hand, was founded solely for students. We do not have any incentives from flight schools and are here to tell you the truth. This is what you need to look out for. Schools need to have a consistent student load in order to guarantee you the best possible training environment. This will result in consistent flying for you, a minimum amount of cancellations and consistent progress in your skills without the need to review things over and over again. A consistent student load is critical. In order to do this, schools have to set a maximum number of students they can accept for a given time period based on the four to one ratio. Many do not, and you end up suffering. Make sure that the contract you sign with your school is not one-sided. Ask yourself how this contract protects you financially if you don't fly consistently. What happens to your living costs if the school does not provide you with consistent training and quality instructors? Most contracts schools make you sign are designed to protect them from having to pay you back any money at all. It's important that you review this contract carefully. We strongly recommend that you use one of our professionals to review your contract with you. We'll be able to show you the dangers and pitfalls for your wallet. Flight schools often reduce their quotes in the hour building portion. During the hour building, you're usually flying alone or with another student to build time towards your commercial hour requirements. It's important for you to know that you cannot use the safety pilot rule in order to save time. It is illegal. Read our FSOC for details on how this works. But the myth that you and another student can share your time building is not true. It is illegal. Legally, you are bound to the flight school when you arrive in the USA. You have their visa, their I-20, and their TSA clearance. It is possible to transfer to another school, but it can be quite expensive, especially when the other school does not accept all of your training from your original school. It's much better to not have to leave in the first place. We can support you in making your decisions regarding your flight school of choice. One of the most important things a flight school can do is properly standardize their instructors so that every one of them teaches you the subjects and flight skills in the same way. There is nothing more frustrating and costly than being cross-checked by another instructor and having to review again because he or she teaches the maneuver differently or wants to see something differently than you're used to. Standardization is supposed to take care of it and is required by the FAA for every flight school. Schools often do not take this as seriously though, because they cannot make any money when they train their own instructors, but it will cost you extra money when inconsistencies affect your training. These are only a few examples of how your flight training could go wrong. We understand that you might be a little overwhelmed with all of this information, the FSOC is a thorough document because we want to teach you everything you should know before you begin your flight training. When you need extra help, remember, one of our professionals is only a few clicks away. Book a consultation 
and we will be there for you.